Well, thank you very much. And uh, let me uh, start by saying that I'm honored to uh, present my session here. And my session will be uh, about M management pack authoring in a kind of quick and dirty manner. Uh, reason for it is that I bump into quite a few customers who are afraid for management pack authoring uh, while they really require it, require it in order to get their environment uh, monitored in a, in a decent manner. And as such, uh, I have uh, thought about it, how to address those issues, and I came with the quick and dirty approach, and this is my session all about it. So, let's start because there's much to tell. Well, first of all, uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Marnix Wolf. I'm for eight years an MVP uh, for the Cloud and Data Center Management, and I have a strong focus on Azure, OMS, SCOM, and Config Manager as well. And I work for over 16 years uh, in IT, and at the moment I'm a senior consultant at Didacticum, a specialized company in the Netherlands. So we do a lot of an education uh, with our trainers and all, also with our experts, so we offer really unique solutions in our environment. Um, the topics I want to discuss is, first of all, the introduction about uh, how this uh, approach came to be. Then I want to talk about the overview, the approach. Then I want to talk about authoring the template management pack XML code, also with a demo. Then I will use an example in order how to use the template management pack XML code in order to get some custom monitoring running. I will also demonstrate that. And then the third and last demo, I will test the example management pack in my demo SCOM environment. And then uh, there will be a small recap. So, first, the, uh, a couple of warnings. So, I have three demos. demos. Um, they are live demos. I have tested them. I have run them multiple times, also today, and just uh, while listening to uh, Brian in order to, to get things straight and to make sure that they work. But, hey, it's a live demo, and sometimes demo devil may visit. So, also the demos may be high-paced, but they are written down in detail on my blog. So, don't hesitate and just visit my blog when you want to know some more details. So, how came this session to be? Many times I talk with my customers and they say, well, we need custom management packs in order to monitor specific workloads for which uh, management packs aren't available and we want to author them ourselves. But how do we do it? Because Visual Studio, we don't have a license and we don't want to use the community version. So Visual Studio is not an option, nor or when the 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 license is available for Visual Studio, they're still not wanting to use it because they don't want to take the deep dive. Even with the management pack uh, uh, fragments, they, they don't want it because they are not used to working with Visual Studio. So <clears throat> then they come to me and they say, how can we build custom management packs all by ourselves, but stay away from the deep dive and stay away from Visual Studio? Well, there is a solution using free tools and a kind of quick and dirty approach, uh, enabling you to deliver quick uh, customized monitoring with your uh, SCOM solution without going knee deep into the XML. So many times when I talk about it and I show them, I give them a workshop and they go, whoa, this is great. So hopefully you will experience the same uh, emotion. <laughs> First of all, how does it work? Because it's quite quite important to get uh, to get to the basics of it. Um, there is not a single solution which fits everything. So the same goes for this solution. The quick and dirty approach works, but uh, when you've got very complex uh, applications or services, this solution is not going to do it for you. Uh, my personal experience is, is that it works with services or applications defined for, from one up to three layers at the most. The moment you go any deeper, um, I strongly advise to look for management fragments, for instance, and use them with management pack author and on the professional edition. Um, also, you have to look for, at the OS type. It works with Windows Server or Windows Client, that is, but also with Windows Computer. When you're looking at Unix, Linux monitoring, uh, this is not the approach. This is not going to work for you. You need to use another approach. 
And also, what can you monitor with the quick and dirty approach? And everything you see here in black, like services, logs, events, websites, performance, databases, and script-based, they are all uh, available in the free version of a management pack author. Uh, when you want to do some SNMP monitoring or you want to monitor a Windows process, you're going to require uh, a license, so you need the professional edition of uh, management pack author, and then you will be capable of building those monitors and rules as well. So the required tool set is select management pack author or MP author in short. The free edition will just do uh, will do just fine, and an XML editor like Notepad++. These two tools are available for free. You can download them, and you can install them, and you can use them uh, any way you want. One of the most important ingredients of the management pack authoring approach I use is the reverse reverse discovery. And the reverse discovery is something uh, special. I haven't cooked it up myself. A former colleague of mine came with this ID, and since then I have introduced it with quite a success uh, for many customers of mine, and they are quite happy with it because it's a registry-based discovery, meaning that it's a lightweight discovery. It won't hit your system very hard. It will just look for a common uh, registry key which is present on every Windows installation, whether we're talking Windows 95 up to Windows Server 2016, everything between, that registry key is always present. As such, the discovery will always work. And therefore, it's, uh, I also uh, refer to it as a set and forget discovery, because it will always work. But because it always works, we have to disable it by default, hence the reverse discovery um, notation. Otherwise, this discovery would run everywhere and it would discover non-existing instances of your application workload to be monitored, and that's not what you want. The reason I introduced this reverse discovery is that once you need to set it only once or to write the code only once, and you can use it any time you like, just as many times as you want. So it's really set and forget. You don't have to break open the code, you don't have to refer or, or to adjust the discovery, it just works. And the way we enable it is just through an override. The uh, sample management pack we're going to build, or better, the template management pack XML code, is going to get a group as well. And that group is going to be used to be filled with computer Windows computer objects and uh, the overrides will be enabled, uh, targeted against that group. So, what does it contain? First of all, it contains a single class. Of course, you can add more classes as, uh, as you prefer, but in this example, I will only add one class. And it will be uh, uh, based on the Windows local application as base class. In the beginning, I used, for example, Windows computer, but I got some valid feedback which told me that it could create too much of a monitoring workload, and instead, I had to use the Windows local application. Then it contains the reverse, the reverse discovery aimed against the registry, and it's targeted against the Windows Server operating system, and it's disabled by default, just as we discussed before. Then it contains a group, which is used as an override target, and it contains the systems running the custom workload to be monitored, and it will be filled with uh, objects of the Windows computer class. Then we have uh, one folder, the, the root folder, and that folder will contain a state view and an alert view. And while working with uh, man, management MP author, we have to look uh, out or to be very careful with our naming convention, because that naming convention is going to be crucial when you uh, mess that up. Uh, it won't be set and forget, and it won't be that kind of easy. So the transformation from template management pack to custom management pack. Uh, 
First, we have the template management pack XME file. We're gonna copy it and we rename the copy to uh, the workload to be monitored. Then we edit the XML code in Notepad++ and actually we do nothing more than a search and replace for the custom application um, naming convention and we make sure that it gets, uh, gets all the new names. Then we save the changes, of course. <laughs> then the new management pack XML code is opened in MP author. The help model is created as required, meaning that at least you add one monitor, otherwise your uh, object will never get a state, and you add the rules as required as well. We save the changes again, duh, <laughs> and then the custom management pack is ready for uh, operations manager. So the moment the custom management pack is ready, we import it into SCUM. The new class is added, but the discovery is disabled by default, so there, will, will, there won't be any objects discovered related to those classes. Um, therefore, we put the related Windows computer objects into the group already contained by the same management pack, and we enable the discovery by targeting, uh, by using that the same group as an override. And then uh, you will see that the instance of the classes are discovered and they will enter a monitored state. And the objects of the new class are shown in the state view and of course the related alerts are shown in the alert view as well. So the first step is authoring the template manager pack XML code. And when you do this just right for the first time, you don't have to repeat this step because it will give you the, the required XML code which you can use over and over again, hence the quick and dirty approach. Also because we are not looking for the specific registry keys related to the custom application or service we want to monitor, but it's kind of dirty because we are looking for an ever-present registry key which and that discovery is disabled by default. But by doing this uh, it allows you to create this code and not to touch it anymore in any kind of way and therefore you have always this pre-baked uh, bread or whatever ready so it, look upon it as an instant cake. You can deliver quite, uh, quick and dirty monitoring and it will do and for many customers of mine uh, they found it to be the solution to most of their uh, management pack requests. So, in the demo to come, I will demonstrate with management pack author how to create a management pack manifest and basic XML structure. It sounds very expensive and very fancy, but to be true, um, managed pack author will do that for me, so that's quite easy. Then, I will create a class together with the reverse discovery and create the folder and two views, the one state and an alert, and then I will create the group as well. And I will save the management pack. And the tools I require are Notepad++, then um, in order to scrub the XML code and save it, I will do that in another step. And the general usage is to keep the template management pack XML codes on a safe place, just make a few copies of them and never ever touch them. And the moment you want to create a custom management pack, just create a new copy and go from there. But never ever use the original code, so you have always uh, the original stuff at hand. So. Let me go. Uh, let me demonstrate the first uh, the demonstration, and which is building the management pack uh, template XML code. Um, let me start my lab. All right. I've already started management pack author. This is the free version, um, though, so there's no license attached to it. Uh, when you download the same version, you will have the same functionality, so there are no catches. I've a folder here, or created a special folder for select management pack university, and what I always do, I create three folders. The first folder will be will contain the template management pack XML code. The second folder will be will contain the scrubbed code. So when the scrubbing goes wrong, nothing will be lost. And the last will be the custom MP itself. So now I create a copy the folder. I'm going to need it. I just click new. 
and I just say new management pack and I go through the wizard. And what I do here is just demo application. It's demo dot application because all the identifiable names uh, do not allow for spaces, but you need uh, uh, a dot instead. And also, what's very important is to always to use the description fields as well. Never ever leave the default description, but just uh, it, um, modify it as required. Just to highlight it, as you can see, uh, we have demo dot application. The display name is demo space application, and the description also refers to demo application. And this naming convention is crucial, and you have to maintain it throughout the authoring of this management pack. We just click next. Then, where do we want to save it? I give the proper folder for it. Then they ask for what kind of management packs want we to refer to. This is a SCOM 2016 environment, so the default choice is okay with me. What you see here are the management pack re it references to. At this moment, there are uh, six of them, but the moment we are going to add a group, an additional reference uh, management pack will be added. Additional reference will be added. I will show you that later on. Then the template selection. Um, my advice is always to use the empty management pack because it enables you uh, a much better authoring experiences. And the wizards in this program are rather smart and very good actually, so they will help you out a big deal. Then finish, and now the XML code will be created also with uh, the other stuff. <clears throat> it will take a while before it is opened in, in the application. And here we've got the application. We can take also a look underwater. Now I open it with Notepad++. And as you see here, we've got our manifest. Or, sorry. Yes. This is the manifest. And this is automatically created by uh, MP author. So that's quite awesome. It already takes away a lot of our work. Then I go to the class and I say, well, I want to create a new Windows registry class. And this wizard not only creates our class, but it will also create our discovery. So I say, well, use, just use the server it runs on because it enables me to go quicker to the correct key. I go to Windows uh, or to software and then I go to Microsoft. And then I just select Windows. And this is the dirty approach, and I select current version. And now you see that the add key is highlighted. Now I can use it, and all I do is add, and click add. This is all there is. And as you can see, the key, uh, high key local machine software, Microsoft Windows current version, this is an ever-present uh, uh, key, no matter what Windows version you're working on. So this is the dirty part of it all. So I click next, properties, well then I have to uh, give it a name and I just keep the names a little bit smart and then uh, demo application class and defines the demo applica uh, application. Yes. The next, the base class is quite important. Um, it's already the correct one. Please do not change it unless you know what you're doing. But Microsoft Windows local application has a low resource footprint on your monitor boxes. Quite important as well. Then the discovery, of course. Uh, demo class. Oh, demo application class discovery. Um, discovery instances related to the demo class, uh, demo application class. Again, descriptions are crucial. Please enter them, and uh, not just for your colleagues, but also for yourself as well. So later on, you can exactly see what it, all, what it does. Discovery targets. We're not going for the Microsoft Windows computer, but instead we select the Microsoft Windows Server operating system. Next, expression. We change the name here as well into demo application without spaces and without a dot. And what's uh, important, let me go back, enabled. Uh, 
I always forget it. <laughs> always remove that, uh, that empty that box. If you don't, uh, you can uh, change it later on. I will show you that as well. So let me see. That's still the same. Next, the discovery will run one day, and then uh, this is also a very uh, nice thing. Yes. Next, finish. So here we have uh, the first uh, class and we have the first discovery. Quite important. When you look at demo application class, you go to the discovery. We see the discovery here and you will see the state enabled is also set to false. If you forget it by accident, many times that happens to me, you can just uh, change it from true to false and it will be enabled by default. It will be disabled by default. <clears throat> now we create a folder, new, create new folder. We use the default choice here, which is good. Then it comes already with a name. Um, the names are always very complex and that has a reason because those names have to be unique and therefore um, um, MP author creates those unique names even they are pretty long. Always feel free to uh, modify them as required. Demo application root folder. Now next we created, we've got our root folder. Then we're going to build our views. So first we can to build our alert view. The, we select the demo application root folder. We just create it. Otherwise it will show up uh, not in that folder. Operations resolution state to unresolved. Oh, um, <laughs> just uh, least severity and priority as required and resolution state to unresolved. When you don't do that, you will also see the closed alerts in that view. And well, I don't want that. Then what is the target? The demo application class, just fine with me. Then alert view, I change the name to alerts or alerts and shows unresolved alerts for demo application. Naming convention is crucial in this approach. Finish. It will be created automatically. We create a new state view. Again, we choose for demo application root folder. We want all the states. We want all maintenance modes. You can even filter here, but um, you can use any kind of wildcard. In this case, I'll just leave it empty. The target demo application class, the, uh, the identity, and I create, let me change, just change it. Change it. State, state view for demo application. Next, finish. Now it will be created as well. When we go to the demo application and we look here at the references, we'll see about six references. Those are added by default. However, I'm going to add this group and this group will be used uh, uh, for uh, enabling the, the, uh, the discovery through an override. So a group is nothing but a class. It's a special kind of class. It's a, a singleton class. So when you want to create, you go to uh, classes as well. Create new group. And here we use demo.application group. And display name is the one you're going to see in your SCUM console. Demo application uh, contains all Windows computers uh, running the uh, demo application uh, workloads. Next. Windows computer add, and now I'm going to create a simple expression and I just go for DNS name and I will explain you what I'm doing here. Uh, this widget will only create a group when I uh, have uh, some dynamic population group members membership rule and therefore I create it but I give it a name for a system for which I expect it won't live so that group won't get populated by, uh, by accident finish. There's one thing now happening. We see the demo application group, but when we go to folders, you see that there is a new folder as well for the demo application group folder. 
I don't want it. I don't want that in my view in the SCOM console on the monitoring, and therefore I make sure I select the proper group or the, uh, the proper folder and I delete it because I don't want that uh, in my uh, management pack code. Now when I look at the <coughs> references, you'll see there is a new reference added to the mix, which is the instance group library management pack, which is understandable because we just added a group and that group lives here in this management pack. Otherwise it won't work. Now we click. Uh, another thing to uh, to look at is the version. It's now one zero uh, zero zero zero. The moment I save it, it will be bumped up by one increment, and that's quite nice because it will uh, enable you to do some proper versioning on your management packs as well. And of course, you can change the version number yourself. But the moment you're working with your beta or test versions, it's my advice just to follow MP author and to let it be. So at this moment we have created our management pack and we can go here to this code, open it with uh, Notepad++ and here is our management pack. And the advantage is, is that it, it's totally clean compared to the management packs or the crappy management packs you're trying to build in the, man in the SCOM console. Um, it contains a lot of GUIDs which is quite hard to understand the, the, the code and everything which is what it does. So I'm quite happy with management pack author to be frank. Time to move on. So now we have uh, created the template management pack XML code and this is going to be uh, used just as many times as you need it. Um, and in this case, we're going to build ourselves a management pack. <coughs> in general, we're going to collect the requirements. We can talk with the subject matter experts. You want to have monitored something. What kind of workload? What are we looking at? Do we need to monitor a service? Do we need to monitor for event IDs? Do we need to, to monitor logs? Whatever. Just talk with them and so you get the requirements for your management packs. The moment uh, we have done our talks, we have collected all the required information. We start with copying the template management pack XML code. We name the copy to a new name. And then with Notepad++, we do simply a search and replace for you know, demo dot application, demo space application, and demo application without a dot and a space, and replace it with the name of our application to be. And the moment then, uh, we save the file with management pack author, we open it, we add, add at least one monitor because when we don't, it will never have a state those instances of those objects with, or of that class, it, that will be bad. People will start asking, it doesn't have a status, what's happening? Well, you forgot to add the monitor, duh. <laughs> um, you add your rules as required, you save the management pack. So that's about it. In this example, I'm going to monitor the non-existent SAP Lohon server. Um, the SAP Lohon server is nothing but a spooler service, and I will use a monitor for that. I will create two rules, uh, both targeted against operations manager event log, one for event ID 1201 and the other for 1210. Uh, those events happen quite a few times per day, so we'll, uh, when everything goes well, we get a lot of feedback in our SCON console. And the Sapple Home server is uh, the server DC, and I'll also add my database server DB01 as well. So back to the second demo where I'm going to use the template management pack XML code. Um, first, I'm going to copy this. Uh, let me script the code first because when you look in the code, you will see that there is a bit of those command fields, about four in total. And with the commands, you see select, and you see my name, Azure Administrator, and when it's created. I don't want that kind of uh, commands in my management pack, and therefore I just delete it. So I make first a copy of it, and then I open the copy, and I scrub uh, the, the copy uh, code. So whenever I forget, uh, make uh, a mistake, I will never uh, destroy uh, the original code. So let me do that, uh, let me check, and then uh, I have here the last one, I guess, comment. Let's just check, count, zero matches, so this is good. We save it, 
hopefully I haven't destroyed it, but I think I'm just fine. I copy the scrub code to the custom MP. And it's now titled demo application and I will rebrand it to sub logon dot server. Alright, now we're here. And this is quite important because the name of the file has to match the ID of the XML code, which is here. You see here demo application. I just copy it, do a search and replace. And what I do is that I say SAP dot logon dot server and I say replace all. As you can see, 20, uh, 29 occurrences were, re were replaced. Now I will replace demo application without any dot and I will replace it also with the sub logon server without any spaces and any dots. When it's fine, there will be two uh, Okay, we get to that one later on. I get that uh, sub logon server, replace all fortune occurrences, and let me count. Uh, demo, count. Uh, All right. That's weird name, current version. All right. Well, I'll just leave it like that. <laughs> Demo devil hit a little bit, but never mind. So now this management pack code is just changed. So everything with demo dot application, demo space application, and demo application without dots or spaces has been replaced with SAP, SAP lock on server. Now we're going to open this code in uh, MP author. Let me close this to a bunch of code. Open it. It always takes. Uh, uh, some moments and here we have our management pack and as you can see everything is just rebranded into uh, SAP logon server. So first we're going to add our monitor. So we say new uh, new um, service monitor. In this case we're going to use the spooler service, the print service, just as an example, print spooler, next. What is the target, which is of course the sub lock on server class. Then uh, we choose the health availability state because we want to monitor for the availability of the sub lock on server service. That's how we rebrand it. Now it's time to change the names. SAP lock on server service monitor and mm, monitors the uh, availability of SAP lock on service service. Again, descriptions are crucial. Run as account, we don't need it, so we just click next. When it's not running, we it's a critical situation, of course. We want an alert, so we say generate an alert, automatically resolve the alert when the monitor returns to a healthy state. That's quite nice and we don't uh, want to change that. Um, we change this, however, isn't running, and we change this as well. Let me see, service, service failure. So, you can add additional data, but in this case, I keep it uh, simple. Now we're going to add our rules as well. For this, I have created, uh, let me see, just let me copy this, works a little bit faster. We can't create uh, an event alert rule. We're going to use uh, the operations manager event log. Again, it, this is just a demonstration, operations manager. We don't want to collect data. So what we're going to do, we're going to deselect this. Oh. And then we can say this is 1201 and the name is health service without any space. 
Next, the target is the SAP lock-on server class identity. Um, this rule, the, the name again is pretty long because they want to make sure it's unique. Uh, always feel free to change it, but always a certain it's, it's unique as well, of course. Otherwise, uh, you get some uh, hard failures or uh, um, errors thrown by the program telling you it's not uh, okay. Of course, you can always add uh, parameters to it. In this uh, demonstration, uh, I just dropped them. Alert suppression is very important, especially when you're building uh, your rules. When you don't, you will probably get alert storms. In this case, however, in this demonstration, I don't add them. But normally, you should add alert suppression. Otherwise, uh, suppose that uh, 5,000 uh, events are raised, are risen, are raised uh, you will get 5,000 alerts. You don't want that. Then a schedule, also something I appreciate highly with management pack author. Normally, adding a schedule to a mono, to a rule is quite challenging. Here, it's just present in the interface, and you have only to point and click, and it just works. It's really great, and all for free. So now we add a second rule, and it will be 1210. Again, operations manage event lock. Again, we don't want to collect any data, so we deselect it. Operations Manager. Twelve ten. Uh, health service. Next, target the SAP lock-on server class, which is quite correct. Um, let me see this. Let me ch change the name. Again, asserting yourself it's totally unique. Otherwise, uh, this is not the case for the display names, but also make sure the display names uh, are to be recognized. Otherwise, you will have other issues. So, and then we need the display name for the alert as well. We bump up the priority to high. Severity is already on an error state, on error, which is good as well. So, next, next, finish. So this is our management pack. We've got our two rules. We've got one monitor. We've got already our class. We've got already our discovery. So this is just fine. And this was going to work. So we're going to save it. This is our management pack. And as you can see, of course, I've done this uh, quite a few times. But you will see uh, when you're used to this kind of approach, the more you do it, the easier it will become. And you will be able to deliver a custom management pack just within an hour. It will be awesome. You will love it. <laughs> um, just let me copy the folder path. Then I go to Operations Manager. And all I have to do uh, for the start, of course, is to import the management pack. Add, add from disk. Oh, no, I don't want that. <clears throat> As you can see, the SCOM console is very fast. <laughs> All right. Um, so, let this import. And while it's importing, I'm going to get back to my slide deck. It uh, looks... Yeah, it's Randy here. Just regarding a question, and uh, I believe yeah. it's related to part of your demo, so I just wanted to bring it up while you're waiting for that yeah. to come. Um, Abby asks, when we are adding the computers in a group, why do we need yeah. a generic registry key for discovery? Uh, like I said, this generic key always works, so you don't have to bother with specific registry keys. Uh, you don't have to uh, worry whether they work, because many times the authoring console lives outside the environment uh, where the, the systems to be monitored live, and you cannot directly connect to them. And just with one typo, your discovery will never work. And as such, I have created a discovery which is just a set and forget approach. Does that answer the question? I believe it does. All right. 
Yeah, you're welcome, Randy. Um, well, now it's time to test the example management pack. So in um, Operations Manager, we're going to import the management pack. We're going to populate the group with the related Windows computers. And then we're going to enable the discovery with an, through an override using the group as the target. And then we need to be patient. Um, let me check. The management pack is important, which is uh, quite good. Then we're going to look for, first we're going to look for the group. Let's search for it, SAP. Here's the sub SAP lock-on server group. And let's check the dynamic member. And this is the rule which we created earlier before. And all we have to do is to remove it. So delete, delete. Now it's gone. And now it's time to add explicit members. I'm going to add the Windows computers because that's the main group actually everything rolls up to the Windows computer every, every uh, which is related to a Windows computer, Windows Server operating system and so on it will roll, roll up to a Windows computer. So I'm going to add my domain controller and just for the fun of it I add my database server as well. My database server is a little bit faster so I hope it comes through a bit faster. Now we have to enable the discovery, which is quite easy. You go to Tools, Search. I hope my console doesn't crash because when you use this approach, many times it does. <laughs> SAP. And you will see there are two discoveries. The, one, uh, the first is for the group, for the group population. And the second is the class we want to uh, uh, the discovery. As you can see, it's disabled by default. And we're not going to enable it by uh, selecting this option here. No way, <laughs> we're going to override it. And we're going to override it for the group we uh, just populated with our database server and domain controller. OK. Enabled, and we set it to true. Because this group is already part of the sub logon server management pack, we don't have another choice because it's an unsealed management pack. So we just click OK. And this also keeps it in uh, in a single place. So everything is in place now, and all we have to do now is to wait. But waiting can be quite tedious, and we don't have the time to wait. But let me check here. We see here already the SAP lock-on server. The state folder, the alerts folder is there. Um, but it will take some time before it gets there. I'm not going to ask you to look to a blank screen for a few minutes. Um, just as being a chef for the television, I've prepared myself uh, a little bit. And uh, instead of the SAP uh, uh, lock-on server, I've created a management pack titled Azure Connection Server. I don't have that much kind of fantasy, so bear with me. But at least I will be capable of showing it. Because when you go to authoring, I will show you the setup. And I'll look for my group, Azure, Azure Connection Server Group. You will see that I've already added two servers, the database and my domain controller. And when I go to uh, the discoveries, Azure, you'll see here Azure Connection Discovery. It's disabled by default as well, as you can see here. But through an override, I've enabled it for the Azure Connection Server Group. It's enabled, as you can see here. And I've done that uh, this afternoon in order to have something to show you. And as you can see, let me see. Uh, here I've got two servers, the database one and the data, data, uh, domain controller. And I've got already a couple of alerts coming in, which is quite nice, you see. Uh, has unloaded tokens. The Azure Connection Server has unloaded tokens. Check the Azure Admin Console for more details. Azure Connection Server has received that tokens and also with alert description. Now it's time to stop uh, the Prince Pooler on the database server. And then you will see that there are some alerts coming in. And the state will be uh, will change as well. Uh, <laughs> might make it might take some time. It's a small laptop I'm working on, so sometimes come is a bit slow, but still we're going to see a result. As you can see, we have the Azure Connection Server Service Monitor here. 
just refresh. Just be patient. <laughs> refresh. Ta-da! <clears throat> and here we see that it has stopped. And when we look here, um, it's all right. Um, all right. The actual connection server for service isn't running anymore. So what you see here, we can go back to the state and we restart the service. It should it should get back to a healthy status and it should close the alert as well. Um, I don't have that much time left anymore. I still have one slide to cover, so I go back to my um, let me see to my slide deck. Yeah. Um, the discoveries will work, the service will come in and they will get a status, but it will be the same as with the Azure Connection Service. And this was my last demo. Um, let's get back to my slide deck. Summary. The recap. First of all, there is no one-size-fits-all approach with management pack authoring. Don't think quick and dirty is going to answer all your management pack authoring questions. Nonetheless, uh, it still covers many use case scenarios. So think about it and use it uh, properly and wisely and you will be quite happy about it. It also offers set and forget discoveries. They will always work in, compared to situations where you can't hit the systems uh, which you require to monitor in order to get the registry keys right in your XML code. Uh, that's quite, uh, quite a Many times uh, those are the main issues why discoveries aren't working because they, they forgot uh, just a single space or a character or got something wrong and the discovery won't work ever. And without a discovery, no instances, no instances, no monitoring, end of story. Uh, it enables fast delivery of customized monitoring without starting from zero. And um, when you want to know more about it, visit my blog and I have written a six-part series about it with screenshots, additional explanations, Q&A at the end. Uh, it will answer all of your questions. And the fun thing is that already for quite a few customers I've introduced this approach and a customer of mine is now capable of delivering customized monitoring within the hour. Uh, he is even faster with it than, than I am. That's quite funny, but I'm, I'm quite proud of it. Well, this was my uh, session. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention. Hey, Marnix, uh, don't close everything out just too no, nope. yet. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. I'll nope. tell you why we have a couple of questions, and, and you might want to pop back there. But uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to read through it. There's like uh, four questions. First of all, thank you very much for the session. That was awesome. It's really always nice to see there are many ways to uh, get things done, especially if it can be quick and dirty. And so uh, the first okay. question comes in from Yarslow Bot. I apologize if I butchered your yeah. name, Yarslow, but. Uh, so the question is, couldn't that override for enabling discovery for a group be already built into mm -hmm. MP authored by MP author? Um, no, because you don't don't have uh, the proper uh, instances uh, to put in it. Yeah? Because the, at the end of the day, the instances uh, refer to a GUID uh, which is present in your database and you don't have those GUIDs, so you cannot uh, already add those systems to the, to the, to the group uh, for the override. Okay, and I see we still have some audio issues here with my headset, I apologize. Yeah. But, um, so there is another question, can you make a DA with that class? Yeah, sure. It's a proper class. So in the Scum console, you can create, you can use that uh, class to create a distributed application as well. You could add other other uh, things to it. The uh, thing is that it's part of an Elm Shield management pack, and the moment uh, you start building that distributed application which contains that uh, class, uh, the distributed application must be saved to the same Elm Shield management pack. And you can only add other uh, instances from sealed management packs to it, not from other unsealed management packs. But that's the only caveat to it. Okay, excellent. 
Uh, there's one more question here that I would ask you if you don't mind no. uh, sharing. Can you bring up uh, MP Author? And the question is, what is the approach to sealing the management pack? And I know this can be done in MP Author, MP Studio, MP Author Professional by right-clicking on the root of the MP name. Uh, okay. Let me see where was it. Um, so yeah. Again, if, you, if you select uh, in the MP Contents panel down below, uh, yeah. the name of the MP right at the very top, and right-click there, that's where it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was just looking for it. Yeah. Yes. So yes Tron, correct. Uh, yeah. Tron, yeah. Hopefully you're seeing that, um, yep. and just recommend when you go through that seal process, once the MP is sealed and you import the management pack into MP Studio, we will put it in the special folder in the store database called sealed, yep. and we'll mm -hmm. create a company name based on what you used when you sealed the management pack. And so all your management packs will go under that. So each time you seal the management pack, just make sure you're using a standard desired company name there and that'll go in there let's see we may have another question here for you can you specify overrides precedence order on group class rule monitor I don't understand completely yeah so I know this is, is also a, this is a very complicated scenario how overrides are applied and and you know, there can be multiple overrides for one thing. Yes, there can be uh, multiple, multiple overrides. Um, by default, the override you specify uh, will have precedence over other overrides. Uh, but suppose you create an override and your colleague creates an override as well, uh, doing exactly the same or just the opposite of what you're doing. Uh, the only thing you can do in Operations Manager is to set the override you have created to overrule any other override override which might be conflicting. Let me check it out and uh, let me show it to you. For instance, I go to um, view knowledge overrides, view summary for the discovery. This is the discovery I just created and here at the end I can enforce it. And now it will over, overrule any other overrides on the same um, discovery. And no matter what those uh, other discoveries will tell you, this discovery is enforced and will uh, yeah, pre take precedence over any other override. Is this the answer to the question? OK. Um, I think that's an awesome start on it. There are some other resources available. Uh, yep. that will help understand, and it's a very complex scenario to, to yeah. understand this order yeah. of preference. So what uh, what we will do is we will send you some information on that that will be helpful. I know there is a document or a, a web link that does explain it in uh, quite a bit of detail. So I've just asked one of the guys if they're online if we can find that. We'll try to find that link for you. All right. We'll, we'll send that out. So. Okay, um, I think that's it, Marnix. All right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, do this webinar. And um, on behalf of all the attendees, thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. So, again, I'm going to try to speak up so make sure everybody can hear me. We do have one more session today. And uh, that will begin in a few minutes. I do have a couple of polls that we'd like to run for them first. So coming up in just a few minutes, we'll have Aditya from Microsoft who will be presenting on SCOM 2016. That will be our final session for the day. And then at uh, 4 o'clock, we'll have our final draw of an Xbox and a copy of MP Author Professional. So. Uh, check your screen. We will be launching a few more polls here. This will be um, related to, for the most part, related to SCOM 2016. And so the first one, what version of SCOM are you using? 
so um, we still have lots and lots of attendees on here. We're uh, up uh, several hundred, and uh, so this should give us some really good results. We're starting to get answers now. We still have some people using SCOM 2007, probably because they want to use that authoring console. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, so yeah, keep, uh, keep answering. Looks like half of you have voted already, so we'll let that run for a little bit longer, see if we can bump that up, um, realizing that uh, we do want to get started on that session here momentarily. So, okay, that's pretty good. We've got over half have voted. Maybe just a few more seconds here. Leave it on there for one minute. Okay, I'm going to close that poll up and we'll share the results so um, you'll be able to see those results. SCOM 2007, 7%. SCOM 2012, 83%. SCOM 2016, 25% of our attendees have uh, migrated to SCOM 2016 and remaining 48% are moving to SCOM within 12 months. Okay, so let's go to our next poll, and that would be, um, let's do this. So the question is, would you be interested in a webinar on SCOM 2016 migration? So this might be something that talks about, you know, your options in terms of migrating to SCOM. Maybe we'll do a live example, we'll see, but... Uh, Certainly, this is something that we could uh, do and uh, host. We'd be happy to do that. We think that our software, in particular MP Studio, can be very helpful in a migration. For example, at the very least, if you run a backup with your SCOM 2012 environment, you've got all your MPs in the store database for future reference. But the store database in MP Studio can also be your central point of deployment to bring any of the MPs back into your 2016 environment. So thank you very much. We have 93% who say yes, they would like to see that. So uh, I'm very confident, being the director of sales, that so we can make that happen for you. So here I'm just sharing the results so everybody can see that. We have a couple more polls, which I'll move to the next one. And uh, thank you for answering these. Okay, what is your current SCOM deployment state? Might be a little bit of an overlap here, but um, please, if you don't mind, uh, going through that that poll quickly, and uh, that will be helpful. I see we've broken it down to no plans to migrate and working actively, and some good options there. Good. We'll just share that up so everybody can see the results. So we've got 19% using uh, 2012 R2, no plans yet to migrate. Okay, 63% are using 2012 R2, but are actively working to migrate. That's awesome. Currently on a version older than 2012 R2, 9%. And that pretty much lines up with what we had earlier on the SCOM 2007, about 7 or 8% and recently migrated to 2016, 9%. One final poll, and then we'll hand things over to our next presenter. In the future, if we were to reimagine the SCOM experience, what adds the most value? Okay, so what would add more value to a reimagined SCOM experience? User interface, management pack tuning, notifications, or extensibility. Appreciate all those answers coming in. That's excellent. This is the final poll. 
Just a reminder that at 4 o'clock we'll have one more draw for an Xbox and a copy of MP Author Professional. Share up the results of that poll. Looks like 68% are looking for, you know, perhaps a reimagined console user interface. 63% um, would like to see a management pack tuning experience be uh, reimagined. And um, 29% on notifications and 43% on extensibility. So thank you very much to everybody for responding to those polls. We appreciate that. And uh, what I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to hand things over to Aditya, who will be our next presenter on SCOM 2016. Aditya, I'm just going to stay on until uh, we confirm that you're able to share your screen and uh, confirm your audio is good. So you're welcome to go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Randy. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, really appreciate this opportunity to, you know, uh, give an overview of SCOM 2016. And I hope uh, this session would be helpful to all and especially to, uh, to the folks who are using 22 R2 right now and, uh, and do not have any plans to migrate to 2016. Okay, so just a little bit of feedback. Your microphone might be a little too close, getting a little bit of a kind of uh, sound. Okay. Uh, so is this good now? Volume might be a little bit low, but uh, that is better, I would say. Okay, okay. How, how does this sound? Is this better? Well, the, the static or the shh part of it is gone totally, but if the volume could be louder, that would be better. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll try my best. Okay. So, uh, very good. I can see your screen. Got it. Got it. So, I'll just uh, get started. Uh, just give me a minute. No problem. Any idea how can I hide this? Uh, so right now what we're seeing is uh, System Center 2016 Operations Manager Overview. Got it, got it. Okay, so uh, we'll get started. Uh, so the idea here is to, you know, uh, uh, I'll be talking about uh, what investments uh, uh, we did in 2016, uh, what different areas uh, we have investment uh, invested in, and what is the value prop for uh, uh, each of the investment and how it will help uh, uh, each customer in, in their own way, right? So uh, to get started, uh, so prior to 2016 um, release, uh, we have been doing a lot of uh, customer surveys. Uh, we have been doing a lot of customer interviews, and uh, you know, uh, we wanted to understand uh, what needs to be improved more. And uh, uh, based on the feedback uh, uh, received from various different channels on uh, uh, what needs to be improved, what features is required, uh, 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 and how can we deliver better value. Uh, so we, based on those uh, insights, we uh, kind of. Uh, uh, categorized all our investments into four different areas and the first one uh, among those four different areas is the monitoring experience so in monitoring experience uh, we, we wanted to you know uh, enhance uh, uh, the MP discoverability aspect which is uh, uh, nothing but uh, improving the management pack lifecycle right uh, the other uh, important feature in monitoring experience is uh, data driven alert management which is about uh, uh, in, uh, enhancing the alert um, uh, lifecycle management right and uh, uh, schedule maintenance mode uh, uh, we have enabled uh, uh, schedule maintenance mode where uh, operators and administrators alike can uh, schedule a uh, maintenance mode in future right uh, we also have an in place upgrade uh, in place from 22 to 2016 so what we are talking right now uh, uh, are basically uh, the most important uh, features in all these areas and uh, uh, the second important area what we have been hearing is you know we have to improve fundamentals like uh, uh, SCOM uh, performance is uh, uh, kind of slow uh, sometimes so we made a bunch of improvements uh, to improve the performance we made uh, uh, improvements in SDK layer we made improvements in in different set of views in the console uh, we made scale improvements for uh, XPLAT monitoring and uh, uh, 
and one of the major uh, feedback we what we have been receiving is that you know uh, cellulite dependency has to go away from web console so we have been uh, uh, we have a great story in that area as well uh, we will uh, dive deep in that area going forward the third area is uh, about uh, increasing the monitoring surface uh, so uh, another interesting uh, feedback what we have been hearing is uh, hearing is that you know uh, network monitoring to monitor any new device which has not already been certified by microsoft so uh, we have to certify the device and then only the customer gets unblocked from getting uh, enhanced monitoring capabilities for that network device so we wanted to kind of uh, break out of that limitation and we want to open up uh, the network monitoring capabilities so uh, to enable that we have come up with a new feature called extensible network monitoring and uh, we have also st uh, started supported, uh, supporting monitoring for nano servers and uh, nano workloads uh, which I will also talk about uh, we also uh, based on the uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me yeah. uh, based on the uh, release of different windows uh, server roles uh, of 2016 uh, we, are, we have also updated the management packs for those server roles as well and uh, uh, we, we have released uh, uh, all these uh, uh, updated management packs for the new versions uh, uh, last December and early January. So uh, we have also been increasing our monitoring surface area through that. And uh, the last area which uh, we, ha we, uh, uh, we have also been focusing on is the analytics aspect of it. Uh, so we have uh, uh, enabled the integration with OMS where you know uh, uh, you can send uh, your on-prem data to OMS and uh, do log analytics and correlations on top of uh, uh, your SCOM data in OMS. We have also come up with the SCOM assessment uh, which which kind of uh, d does uh, a complete check on your environment and kind of uh, proactively uh, uh, notifies you to take actions uh, uh, to you know, ensure that your monitoring environment is smooth up and running kind of a thing. So uh, on a high level, these are the different uh, categories and different uh, uh, aspects of investment what we did in 20, SCOM 2016 RTM. So I will dive deep into uh, each of these features as well and uh, I'll also talk a bit about uh, what's coming up in SCOM as well, right? So uh, if, you, if you have any questions during uh, 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 during the uh, talk, just uh, do let us know and probably Randy and I can coordinate and uh, try to answer those questions. Right. Uh, so moving on, uh, uh, the first uh, uh, the first feature uh, in the monitoring uh, experience area, MP discoverability. Right. So uh, one of the uh, major uh, uh, feedback what we have been hearing is that you know uh, managing the ma uh, the life cycles and you know. Uh, or trying to uh, understand when an update to the management pack is available and uh, trying to understand you know what what uh, uh, workloads are being monitored uh, and what workloads are not being monitored so all these different use cases right has been a challenge for uh, most of the administrators uh, till now and so with this MP discoverability we are basically trying to solve uh, three different use cases uh, the first use case is uh, uh, let's say in your environment you have deployed a workload but uh, uh, you're not monitoring that workload through SCOM, right? So let's say you, ha you have deployed uh, SharePoint, for example, right? But you have not uh, uh, imported SharePoint management pack and you're not uh, 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 monitoring SharePoint, uh, whatever the reason may be, uh, it may be the test environment or whatever, right? So in these kind of scenarios, right, uh, uh, the first use case is basically uh, MP discoverability shows up saying that, you know, uh, these are the different set of uh, uh, workloads which are running in your environment but uh, which are not being monitored right so uh, this kind of gives an insight to the administrator, administrator saying that oh, you know uh, that you know these are the different set of workloads which are running and these are the different set of machines or servers on which these workloads are running and uh, based on these insights if the admin uh, decides to uh, start monitoring these uh, this workload all he has to do is you know uh, select the management pack and uh, click the get MP option and uh, the MP is automatically uh, downloaded and uh, uh, imported through that and uh, uh, in case you know uh, before importing the MP uh, the admin wants to uh, understand the, what this management pack is all about what what does this management pack monitor uh, uh, if the administrator wants to uh, read the MP guide he can also do so by clicking on 
a few MP guide uh, which opens up the MP guide and uh, uh, then we can get more information on that as well. So uh, we also have a different option called as more information. When you select the uh, uh, unmonitored workload and you click more information, you get to see uh, the different servers on which these uh, uh, workloads are being running and not being monitored. So this is one of the use cases. The, the second use case is uh, basically uh, you have a workload running in your environment and uh, uh, that workload is being monitored uh, through a management pack but a uh, latest updated uh, version of the management pack is available uh, which is not not yet imported in your uh, SCOM environment right so uh, what we call is uh, uh, update available state so uh, what a user can basically uh, admin can basically do here is uh, 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 he or she can uh, view the MP guide and understand you know uh, what are the different changes in this updated version and based on this insight uh, he or she may uh, choose to uh, update the machine pack by click, clicking get MP and uh, the MP is uh, downloaded and imported so that the uh, the machine pack is up to date in the environment right the other uh, the third use case is uh, so when you import a machine pack uh, there are uh, some uh, soft dependencies uh, partial dependencies on different set of machine packs so until unless uh, uh, all these dependent machine packs are imported uh, you do not get 100% uh, monitoring capabilities uh, of the uh, workload so uh, uh, this scenario also uh, if there is a workload in your environment uh, which has a partial dependency on different uh, some other management pack which is not yet imported uh, we show uh, those uh, those kind of workloads as well so let's say if SharePoint uh, management pack has dependency on some other management pack we show uh, show that you know uh, SharePoint management pack has been partially installed and uh, when you select the SharePoint management pack and click on more information you can see what are the different uh, set of dependent management packs uh, uh, are imported and what are the required set of margin packs which which also needs to be imported to uh, to make you know to make this uh, monitoring 100% productive and based on these insights you uh, admin can uh, you know choose to view the uh, mp guide and uh, also get uh, get the margin packs imported and updated so uh, in a nutshell uh, this this uh, this uh, feature kind of for you know auto discovers workloads in your environment uh, find deploy and maintain smashing pack from a single view right and uh, uh, kind of gives a holistic view of uh, all the workloads and uh, uh, the management packs running in your environment right uh, moving on uh, so this is a kind of a pictorial representation of uh, uh, how this MP discoverability works. So uh, there's a periodic sync which happens between uh, the download center and the online catalog and uh, uh, the SCOM console is uh, uh, syncs up the online catalog to uh, uh, get all the information uh, from all the work. Uh, so so the SCOM console what it basically does is uh, uh, it basically uh, does a lightweight discovery on all your servers to identify uh, what are the workloads running in your environment. Now once this uh, discovery is done, for each workload uh, it checks you know what, what is the version available in an online catalog and what is the version deployed in my environment. Uh, when, when there is a mismatch in the versioning, uh, you know, uh, uh, it kind of says that you know there's an update available. Uh, now uh, if there's a case where you know uh, uh, the, there's a workload has been discovered and there's a version of uh, management pack uh, in online catalog but there's no uh, version of the management pack in your uh, uh, environment it shows that you know uh, the workload is not being monitored and all those use cases are uh, being uh, honored from there so coming on uh, to uh, solve the problem of uh, data driven alert uh, management <coughs> So uh, we, we, we heard, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, from some customers saying that, you know, whenever there's a network outage or in some scenario, a uh, SCOM can sometimes, you know, uh, uh, flood a lot of alerts uh, uh, kind of a thing and generate a lot of noise. So, uh, and basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, and there are some set of customers uh, who uh, uh, import the default management packs and uh, do not uh, uh, tune the management packs to their uh, requirement. And in this scenario, they uh, they come across a lot of uh, uh, unwanted noise, unwanted alerts, uh, kind of a thing. So uh, to enhance the experience, to you know, uh, uh, enable admins with insights to take take decisions on what 
what is happening in my environment, what is needed, and how can I make, make my environment better. So uh, this is where uh, the data-driven alert management uh, feature comes in. Uh, what it basically does is uh, uh, within a given period of time, uh, uh, it shows insights on what are the different uh, set of mesh impacts which are generating most number of alerts in the environment. Now based on this insight, uh, uh, you might be, uh, 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 the admin might be interested to understand more on uh, on what is what is what rules or monitors are generating within each management pack. So uh, when user wants to dive deep uh, for a specific management pack, uh, uh, he or she uh, get to know, you know, what what are the different set of rules or monitors which are generating a lot of noise. Uh, how many times uh, uh, each rule or monitor has generated noise, kind of a thing. Now even this information is sometimes uh, uh, not uh, not enough to make a, a easy decision to uh, uh, to understand if this is required or not, or uh, can this uh, can the thresholds for this rule of water can be uh, tuned or not. So uh, in addition to this information, what, uh, what else we show is you know uh, what are the different sources which which has generated these many number of alerts. So uh, once you uh, get to see, you see the list of margin files which are generating a lot of noise, uh, you get to see uh, uh, the list of rules and monitors which are generating a lot of noise within a specific margin pack. Now at, even at this level for each rule or monitor you can see you know, uh, uh, what is the split of source sources which, which have generated uh, uh, this, this number of alerts for this rule or monitor. Kind of a thing. Now here you can try to understand if there's an anomaly with with a particular source. A particular source is generating a lot of noise, or all the sources are generating a lot of noise, and kind of uh, take a decision to tune the thresholds or uh, enable disable uh, uh, the rule or monitor permanently because uh, it might not be uh, relevant to your monitoring requirement. So uh, this this uh, uh, feature kind of uh, provides uh, 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 good insights to enable uh, administrators to make. Uh, easy decisions to tune the environment. Uh, moving on, uh, schedule maintenance mode is uh, another uh, feature where uh, administrators and operators from the monitoring pane can, uh, you know, uh, schedule maintenance mode for a specific uh, set of uh, groups and objects, and uh, can 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 also be a recurring schedule as well. Uh, so, uh, so we have enabled uh, this feature for operators as well from the monitors pane, monitoring pane. So it is no longer uh, uh, available for administrators, but it is also available for operators. And uh, we have also enabled uh, the endpoint uh, maintenance mode capability uh, from client side through the agent. And uh, through this uh, schedule maintenance mode, uh, 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 operator or administrators can uh, schedule multiple maintenance modes, uh, uh, multiple schedules with a different set of uh, uh, recurrent frequency, right? Uh, the extensible uh, network monitoring capability, which uh, I have been talking about, right? Uh, so uh, earlier, uh, uh, generic monitoring, uh, uh, generic network monitoring capabilities has always been there for all the devices, but uh, 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 we had to certify uh, uh, devices to get uh, 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 extensible monitoring capabilities, and uh, in that way, we found that you know we were kind of uh, uh, limiting the uh, network monitoring capabilities. So uh, we wanted to open up uh, uh, the network monitoring capabilities. So we came up with a new tool called uh, uh, Network Monitoring uh, uh, MP Generator Tool. Uh, this is available with uh, SCOM uh, 2016. What it basically does is uh, uh, you can import uh, uh, various different set of uh, 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 MIP files uh, uh, of your own devices, and uh, uh, based on uh, based on the OIDs, you can uh, 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 write your own rules monitors for those OIDs through a good a uh, UI uh, tool, a UI tool, and uh, generate a management pack uh, based on the requirement of uh, uh, of network monitoring capabilities, and start monitoring any any SNMP enabled uh, network device. So uh, uh, the tool basically loads all your MIP files uh, to gather the OID information. Uh, it uh, it easily uh, provides you uh, an interface to generate uh, uh, rules monitors. Uh, 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 and the alerting logic for each uh, uh, OID uh, uh, and the devices. And it also uh, allows you to add uh, different components as rules and monitors, right? So with this, uh, uh, with this you can generate uh, uh, a single management pack to monitor 
any number of uh, network devices so it's not a one-to-one -one mapping as well uh, you can create a single margin path to monitor different devices and uh, uh, this this has been uh, uh, this, this, this has been a kind of uh, uh, interesting feature and a lot of uh, 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 we are getting a, a good feedbacks feedback for this uh, feature as well so fundamentals, uh, 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 we have been uh, uh, investing a lot on improving fundamentals. One of the area has been uh, to improve the performance of the console. So uh, if you see, uh, so we have made performance improvements uh, uh, for alert views, uh, state view, and diagram view. So in alert view, if you compare uh, the loading time, uh, 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 the loading time, the uh, uh, alert context menu, the alert details uh, uh, pane, the alert uh, task pane uh, with uh, SCOM 2016 and SCOM 2012, you will find a huge difference uh, uh, in the performance time and uh, the time it takes to load. Right. So uh, uh, for alert views, we made announcements to uh, uh, load the alert view faster, uh, load the alert details pane, uh, alert context menu and the alert task pane. Uh, state view uh, uh, and the diagram view, we made announcements to uh, load uh, the state views uh, and diagram view faster and we made uh, performance improvements in SDK layer to uh, announce, enhance the performance of console as well. And coming to the scale improvements uh, for Unix and Linux monitoring, uh, we have made uh, uh, scale enhancements where uh, a single uh, uh, mon uh, management server can monitor uh, twice the number of uh, uh, Linux Unix machines uh, with the management server. So uh, if SCOM uh, uh, with if SCOM R2 a single management server was able to ma uh, monitor 500 li uh, Linux Unix uh, servers, SCOM 2016 would be able to monitor 1000 Linux Unix servers uh, with a single management server. Right. So we have also uh, come up with uh, a preferred partner program uh, uh, to uh, enhance the visibility into partner solutions uh, to the customers. So uh, uh, this uh, uh, this view uh, basically uh, 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 calls out the third party partner premium solutions uh, uh, which has been uh, certified by our team and uh, uh, which, uh, which are available for customers to use at least the premium uh, uh, solutions. And these partner solutions can be uh, management paths, authoring solutions, dashboard solutions, and uh, it can be any partner solutions. It may not be only management paths. And uh, uh, you also have, uh, we also have select uh, as part of our uh, preferred uh, partner program as well. All right. So uh, web console improvements. Uh, so this has been uh, one of our top most ask uh, in various different uh, channels, maybe the user voice or how the customer connects and all. So uh, uh, most of the customers wanted us uh, to move away from Silverlight. So uh, in this journey to move away from Silverlight, uh, with SCOM 2016 RTM, uh, what we did was uh, we uh, removed Silverlight from all the views in Web Console except the dashboard views. So today, uh, if you have deployed uh, uh, SCOM 2016, except the dashboard views, all the views in Silverlight, uh, sorry, in uh, Web Console are HTML based and can be opened from multiple different browsers uh, without Silverlight dependencies, right? So, uh, uh, so post RTM, we have been uh, uh, investing on uh, making uh, HTML5 dashboards. So uh, right now we are uh, working uh, on uh, developing HTML5 dashboards where you know even the dashboards are uh, uh, are not dependent on Silverlight and the entire web console can be accessed open uh, uh, from different browsers and it's completely HTML based. So uh, with RTM, we have started our journey to move from Silverlight, uh, but uh, the dashboard views is still Silverlight in, in RTM. But uh, post RTM, we uh, started, uh, we we went further uh, with our journey to make uh, the web console completely Silverlight. Right. So I'll talk a bit about uh, the HTML5 dashboards as well. So uh, with HTML5 dashboards, uh, this is uh, completely. Uh, a new set of uh, capability which uh, uh, we are working with. So uh, since we are working on new set of HTML dashboards, we kind of uh, 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 try not to carry any unnecessary baggage uh, associated to the current uh, dashboard dashboarding experience in SCOM. 
so so when i say dashboarding experience in scrum uh, in uh, uh, the current uh, uh, dashboarding experience where you have to sell <coughs> excuse me where you have to select a predefined layout uh, uh, while creating a dashboard you have to select a predefined layout where you have to specify uh, the layout the number of cells you want to have in the dashboard everything and once uh, this layout has been selected this layout uh, cannot be changed uh, uh, in the lifetime of this dashboard uh, you, you either have to uh, delete the dashboard or you you have to create a new dashboard with a new layout and then uh, satisfy uh, your dashboarding requirements so uh, this this kind of uh, 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 this kind of uh, face like limitation in the layout so we kind of opened it up with an open layout uh, there uh, the user can add any number of uh, uh, widgets or any number of uh, 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 number of layers, any number of uh, data visualizations in the dashboard on the go. It may not be predefined kind of a thing. And the authoring experience for uh, a widget, uh, defining a widget or creating a widget, editing a widget, uh, updating a widget. Uh, similarly, uh, creating a dashboard, updating a dashboard or editing a dashboard has been uh, completely simplified with inline experience, uh, not through the wizard driven experience, so that uh, it is uh, uh, user friendly and can be you know uh, uh, easily understood and uh, start working right uh, this can be accessible from uh, different uh, uh, browsers similarly uh, like uh, uh, like the current rtm version is being working except the dashboard views and uh, no more silver dependency as well so this will take uh, take a journey towards uh, you know uh, making uh, uh, making the web console completely silver like free so this is uh, the HTML dashboards uh, is working progress. It's not yet uh, uh, public, but uh, uh, we are working uh, to make it uh, realistic. Yeah. So uh, this uh, the Fluentd based uh, Linux uh, log file monitoring uh, is another set of uh, uh, major feature uh, which uh, we are working uh, post RTM, uh, post GA. So. Uh, uh, so another set of feedback uh, we have been hearing is uh, uh, the Linux log file monitoring. Uh, uh, the monitoring surface for Linux log file monitoring has to be enhanced. So, uh, so keeping uh, hearing that feedback, uh, what we are doing is uh, we are coming up with uh, 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 extensible log file monitoring, which is totally based on uh, FluentD plugin plugin model, where where you define the source, where you you, where, where you define the uh, uh, logic and where you define the output, right? So, uh, so uh, in the Fluentd uh, based model, uh, what you define uh, is uh, what type of what source do I collect and uh, uh, what source do I look at, what logs do I look at, and what what pattern do I look at? And in the logic, you define uh, uh, the pattern match. Uh, uh, what kind of pattern do I match? Uh, regular expression matches. The pattern matches. Do I match? And the output is where where you say you know what needs to be done with this uh, uh, pattern match uh, and another interesting uh, feedback uh, what we are hearing is you know the wild cards uh, 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 capability to enable wild cards has to be uh, provided in the file paths for local monitoring which was not there earlier so now uh, we have enabled uh, the wild cards in file paths as well and uh, uh, this, this is uh, completely based on uh, fluentd uh, so uh, uh, customers can leverage uh, the uh, the commu uh, fluentd community based based plugins which are already available and uh, kind of uh, uh, leverage the uh, log file monitoring capability in scom to you know quickly uh, get up to speed and uh, uh, start monitoring uh, linux log files right so uh, the, the, these are the different uh, uh, set of uh, uh, regular expressions uh, 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 which uh, we will be releasing out of the box. Uh, there, these are the uh, different plugins which uh, uh, SCOM will be having out of the box. A simple match is uh, a simple match is a direct match saying that you know if you find uh, uh, if you find this match, then then uh, you do a particular uh, set of logic. You raise an alert kind of a thing. Exclusive matches, uh, you say, you know, uh, pattern one has occurred, but pattern uh, two has not occurred, kind of a thing, those kind of scenario. Correlated matches, uh, you say that, you know, uh, if pattern one has occurred five times in the next uh, 15 seconds, then, you know, uh, uh, raise an alert, kind of a thing. A repeated correlation is, 
pattern uh, you know uh, pattern uh, sorry uh, correlated matches basically you know uh, pattern one has occurred and uh, uh, if pattern two also occurs within uh, a span of five seconds then uh, raise an alert kind of a thing right repeated correlation is basically you know uh, pattern one has occurred a number of times in the span of 15 seconds then raise an alert. This can be uh, uh, authentication failure uh, use cases where uh, let's say if there are uh, continuous uh, five authentication failures in, in a span of 15 seconds then you uh, raise an alert saying that you know uh, uh, you, you have reached the authentication limit uh, failure limit kind of thing. Exclusive uh, correlation is basically uh, uh, you say that you know uh, pattern one uh, has occurred n number of times in 15 sec uh, time span and 15 seconds time span and pattern B has not occurred in this time span. So uh, these are the different set of uh, 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 plugins which we will be coming up uh, by default and uh, users can also leverage uh, the Fluentd uh, based plugins which are already available in the community and kind of uh, 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 enable different uh, log file monitoring scenarios. Right. So, uh, SCOM assessment. Uh, so, SCOM assessment has been uh, another uh, uh, investment we made in the analytics aspect of uh, the monitoring uh, surface. Uh, what it uh, uh, basically does is it runs. Uh, uh, so, to enable SCOM assessment, uh, uh, the SCOM management group has to be connected to OMS, and uh, what this SCOM assessment solution basically does is it uh, runs a basic uh, uh, checks in your environment to uh, you know to understand uh, what are what are the uh, what are the areas uh, uh, which are uh, close to critical or critical and uh, kind of a scenario so let's say SQL uh, if my the SQL database uh, memory is uh, going going out of space kind of a thing then uh, then the solution uh, proactively uh, you know uh, suggests saying that you know uh, uh, the space, space is going out for the SQL. It gives uh, recommendations saying that you know uh, this is what you can do, uh, and it also uh, uh, sets some context saying that uh, what happens if the space goes out. What what is the different set of recommendations that I can do to resolve this issue, and what are the different set of monitoring objects affected due, due to this issue. So it gives a kind of a holistic view on, onto the issue. Uh, uh, like the context and the recommended actions and the, the affected objects and more information on the issue and all these uh, 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 rules have a weightage uh, which is predefined by us uh, um, and the weightage also kind of shows up uh, the state uh, that you know this this is a critical uh, this issue is critical this issue is uh, less priority kind of scenario is basically uh, so it assesses your SCOM environment against all the uh, best practices so if if you are aware of uh, RAP as a service which which uh, which is available to uh, the premium uh, uh, customers for SCOM so what what we try to do is we try to uh, leverage all the uh, basic checks available uh, from uh, RAP as a service and uh, try to wrap it up in a solution and uh, uh, provide uh, uh, the value of assessing the SCOM environment uh, to all the customers. Right? It, it can identify issues which can cause downtime and kind of alarm you saying that you know, uh, these are the recommendations which needs to be fixed. Right? Yeah. And each rule is prioritized based on the critical. So, uh, so these are the uh, on a high level. Uh, these are the uh, different set of uh, uh, cap major capabilities, major investments uh, we did in uh, SCOM 2016, and uh, uh, two um, focus areas we have been uh, focusing uh, post uh, uh, RTM. Uh, major focus areas we have been focusing. Yeah. So, uh, if, if you have uh, any questions, uh, we can uh, uh, try to answer those questions as well. Uh, uh, if you want me to dive uh, deep uh, or share more details on any specific uh, 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 scenario or any specific feature, uh, I can uh, do that as well. Hey, Aditya, uh, this is Kevin Holman. I've been answering some of the questions as they've been coming into chat. Um, but there was a couple sure. that I feel like you might be able to reflect upon. Um, one of them was... Sure. The uh, SCOM 2016 agent issue with application pools crashing, um, 
can you do you yes. have any information about kind of what's going on there? Sure. So uh, we we have a uh, we have a fix for the issue, and uh, uh, we are validating uh, the fix uh, uh, right now, and uh, uh, we are planning to release a hot fix uh, for that fix. So so uh, we would be able to. Uh, uh, I will be update uh, sharing a blog on mom team on the ETA for the hotfix, but we, we should we are uh, closer to releasing the hotfix is what I can say at this point of time. Yeah, and and that that fix will be uh, available in UR three for sure. It's component is in UR three. Perfect. Yes. And then one of the other questions that was repeated often uh, was discussing our plan for TLS 1.2 support so customers can get away from TLS 1.0 and 1.1. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we are uh, working on uh, TLS uh, 1.2 as well. Uh, we have been uh, getting uh, asked from a couple of customers and uh, we are uh, kind of uh, uh, investing and working towards TLS 1.2. Hey, DJ, Kevin, it's Randy here. There are some other questions there, but Kevin, you're doing an awesome job. So, Oh, you want me to just moderate? Okay. No, if you want to, it's up to you. Okay. So um, there's a question, is the reporting tab going to be added to the web console? Uh, as of now, uh, we do not have uh, uh, any plans to do that, but, but if you think uh, uh, adding the reporting tab uh, to the web console is is needed. We would like to hear more from you, uh, uh, maybe a one on one call to understand you know, uh, the criticality, uh, the scenario, why a reporting tab uh, is needed. Probably we can have an offline discussion to understand more on that. You would like to hear more on that, yeah. Okay. And then let's see, that's TLS. Are there any plans to release Blue Stripe service mapping for SCOM without using OMS? Uh, without using OMS, uh, that is not possible. But uh, uh, what we are trying to explore is, we are trying to explore uh, 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 to bring uh, the blue stripe capabilities or the service map capabilities into SCOM through backward integration. So uh, that is one of the area which we are exploring right now. Yeah. Okay. And will UR3 be addressing the bug in maintenance mode with the SQL jobs failing if you have non-default database names? Are you familiar with that uh, issue? I got to check, check the list of UR3 items uh, and get back on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do OMS updates wipe, still wipe out SCOM group settings in the agent? I wasn't aware of that one. Yeah, me too. Okay, uh, so we don't. Yeah, uh, so, okay, can we get more details on that? Maybe uh, offline as well. I would like to understand more on that. Okay, so uh, Cole, if you can provide more information um, to us on that, um, either add it to the chat window, or you can send myself or a DJ an email directly. Um, Will SCOM 2016 have operational intelligence like Splunk? Uh, operational intelligence in uh, log-based search, uh, is, is that the question? I would assume that would be the question. Uh, so the way we are looking at is uh, uh, we are uh, looking at integrating with OMS and uh, uh, try to leverage uh, the log-based log analytics capabilities in OMS to achieve uh, the analytic scenarios and the correlation scenarios with SCOM data. Yeah. Okay, any plans to increase the number of concurrent console connections which right now is limited to 50? Uh, as of now, no, but again, uh, would, uh, would like to hear and understand uh, the requirement uh, when you say more than 50, uh, how much more and uh, the scenario, the environment, and topology to understand, and you know, have have this item in the backlog as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you more easily use alert context parameter to pass in notifications? 
I don't really understand. He more easily use alert context parameter to pass in the notifications connectors. Uh, yeah, that may be a one-off conversation. Um, uh, blue stripe capability. Yeah, so we, I think we covered that. Um, will Service Manager 2016 services pull service components from SCOM 2016 distributed applications if the distributed app MP has also been imported to Service Manager? I have no idea on that. That's a Service Manager question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's a great question. Uh, I know that there was functionality for that in the past, but I don't. I don't know. I have not kept up with Service Manager, and I don't think Aditya is the probably the right person to follow up on that. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, I can uh, uh, loop in or sync up with the uh, right folks. Uh, maybe if he, if I have the question, I can get back. Okay, so Michael, your question is on passing alert parameters in the subject lines of notifications. So that, that has to, I wrote a blog post on that that had to do with dynamic alerts and to be able to put dynamic data into alerts. Um, and it breaks at the notification level. I, I don't know of any work that's being done for that. I mean, that's kind of like a, just a byproduct of the fact that alerts names even supported uh, accepting variables from the alert parameters. Um, I, I don't know that there's anything, you know, I, I don't even know if that's been raised as a, a bug. So uh, if that's something that's important to the business, uh, for your business, you would need to open up a, a case with Microsoft and ask them to file like a, a request for change or a bug on that. Um, because I, I don't know that we've had a lot of customer feedback that that's a big problem. Uh, OMS has built-in integration with ShareWell. Any plans to integrate SCOM 2016 to ShareWell? Uh, I, I don't know of any. I think most of our integration story has to do with Orchestrator. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, like our product connector design is, is not really the being invested in moving forward. And, you know, System Center, is, since it's a suite, uh, Orchestrator is the integration solution. So whether they're planning a ShareWell-specific API, I don't know. Uh, I think we're kind of getting away from developing APIs and leveraging, you know, PowerShell to to be the integration solution uh, with other systems. Um, and then there's a question, would Fluent D based log monitoring of Linux require additional servers and storage for monitoring? I, I think that's uh, right. Uh, so sorry, uh, can you repeat that question? Yeah, would Fluent D based log monitoring of Linux require additional servers and storage for monitoring? Uh, no, uh, it, it doesn't. Uh, so. Uh, what is required is uh, the Linux agent needs to be updated so that uh, the FluentD capability, uh, the new uh, Linux agent uh, has the FluentD capability in it as well. So to start uh, Linux log file monitoring, the agent has to be updated and the certificate associated with the agent has to be updated and you are all set. So uh, no additional servers or storage is required. Yeah. Great. Uh, any new PowerShell commandlets or investments in PowerShell commandlets for more SDK control? Okay. Uh, uh, do, do we have any specific uh, requirements in this area? Uh, because uh, uh, what kind of APIs are we looking at? Uh, uh, I wanted to understand uh, the areas or the data which which you are not getting yet but want to uh, uh, extract from policy commandlets. Yeah, so I think um, I think your perspective is, hey, what do you want? What do you need? And they, I think the question was just, yeah. is there anything coming around the pipe that's being added that that we know about? So, uh, whenever uh, we are implementing new capabilities, uh, we are uh, uh, increasing the 
uh, uh, we are adding a powerful commandlet uh, for that to extract the data as well. But uh, uh, but if you feel uh, there's a, uh, you need to extract some different data and for which we do not have commands, please do let us know and uh, we will definitely look into that. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> so we still have, you know, uh, approximately 10 minutes. It's been an awesome day, Aditya, on uh, behalf of everybody who's uh, joined and attending today's session. Thank you very much for coming on board. To, uh, our attendees don't realize that you basically got called in late yesterday to fill in and, and be able to uh, do the session. So we really appreciate that. It was very informative. Based on our polls, we see there still you know a lot of people who are planning to migrate, uh, if not this year, but sometime in the next uh, 12 months for sure. So uh, this was a very timely session. We did talk or ran a poll about doing a webinar talking about migration. So this is something to look for in the near future. We will uh, put together a webinar. It will involve how MP Studio can help with that migration, I've put lots of really good ideas on how it can help. So um, more to come on that webinar. We also will have a draw prize in a few minutes here. There is another question that has come in. And um, Kevin, I don't know if you want to read that out. I can do it. Uh, yeah, I started typing it. So okay. the question is, uh, are the base OS MP still using the same scripts? Uh, is there a new base OS MP? You know, what's going on with VB and WMI and blah, blah, blah. So um, it's a great question. All, in SCOM 2016, all the core SCOM management packs uh, that target the health services uh, now use PowerShell. Um, this was a requirement. SCOM 2016 now requires that the agent, every agent in the environment have PowerShell 2.0 or later as a minimum. That's documented in TechNet. So because of that minimum requirement, we're now able to assume that every machine has PowerShell, and so we can put PowerShell scripts targeting wide classes. So um, the base OSMPs, no, we're not going to go back and change out every base OSMP for the previous OSs, but new management packs moving forward. So if you look at like the base OSMP for 2016, it's 100% PowerShell. And we have to do that because of Nano. Uh, Nano does not support C-Script and so, uh, or JScript or any of those uh, legacy technologies. So everything developing moving forward, I think you're going to see is going to be 100% PowerShell. Um, and that's and now even custom manager packs that's available to us because never before in SCOM 2012 could we guarantee every machine had PowerShell installed. That is the case in SCOM 2016. So. Do you want me to finish with the, some of the other questions? Yeah, sure. If, you, if you'd like, Kevin, okay, go sure. ahead. Uh, best practices on SCOM and SCOM data warehouse implementation, that is, that is such a wide topic. There's no way. I mean, I could probably sit here and do two hours worth of discussions on that topic alone. Uh, so I'm not even going to begin to broach that. But I would say, you know, I have a lot of blog articles on maintenance activities and data warehouse tuning. Uh, and best practices across the board. I mean, that we, we do four-day workshops on that kind of stuff, so um, certainly I doubt I could just uh, start covering that in the time we have. Uh, does the SCOM 2016 authoring pane console make it easier to leverage PowerShell? No, unfortunately it doesn't. The, the authoring pane does not include new uh, UI page sets. That's what those are, those wizards that support PowerShell. Now I will say that um, uh, we have a, a PFE that has written some some add-ins to the SCOM console that allow you to do PowerShell based monitoring uh, and I can provide a link to that. Um, uh, that that lets you use the SCOM console to create PowerShell-based monitors. Uh, but, of course, I strongly recommend you look at Fragments because they're going to light up a lot more capabilities than we could ever put in a UI. Yeah. Uh, remove redundant management groups for multi-home. Um, so I have a management pack that I have not blogged about. There are several MPs out there that will 
discover multi-homed agents and try to find the old leftover management groups that don't exist anymore. Uh, so I have a agent management management pack that includes a whole bunch of stuff that you can bring in your Scrum 2012 environments, and I wrote it specifically to discover if you have PowerShell 2.0 or not. Uh, but it, I went ahead and threw in a whole bunch of other stuff, and so the feedback has been positive. So stay tuned to my blog. Uh, probably in the next day or two, I'll have that up, and it includes discovering uh, agents that are multi-homed and li listing out the management groups, and will let you add or remove management groups remotely to the agent. Um, is there a plan to, plan to allow SCUM agents to initiate maintenance mode client side? That uh, that exists in SCUM 2016. So that, that was developed and released in Scrum 2016 RTM. Uh, there is a PowerShell commandlet that you can use on the client side to initiate uh, maintenance mode. Um, uh, best practice for Scrum 2016 database. Uh, I have a blog article on recommended SQL maintenance for the database, and I also had a presentation that I have a blog article on that talks about um, recommendations for like tuning and, and database settings uh, and SQL optimizations like max stop and memory limitations and things like that. So that's all available on my blog. I'll try to go find links uh, for that. Uh, is there a good tool for preparing to upgrade? Uh, I, I, I haven't kept up with what, everything the community is doing, but I know that like Tao Yang and 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 uh, way out there, um, a guy he's a PFE that his his blog name is way out there uh, on TechNet. He uh, they have written upgrade management packs. I don't know if they've released them. They, like they did a lot for 2007 to 2012. I don't know if they've released 2012 to 2016 stuff. Um, but as far as custom management packs go, there's nothing in the schema that's changed. So anything that worked in 2012 is going to work in 2016. Um, yeah. That wasn't true for 2007 to 2012 because we deprecated some things and we upgraded the schema. But anything you wrote for 2012 is going to work in 2016. We have not removed any critical components or classes that I'm aware of that are going to create any issues there. Yeah. If I could yeah, just... Uh, could Sorry, go sure. ahead, Aditya, and then I'm going to add on to that sure. as well. Sure. Uh, just to add uh, uh, what Kevin was mentioning about uh, the solution which we have developed. So, uh, so we have developed a management pack uh, which helps you to upgrade from 2012 to 2016, which is available in this blog. And uh, also the OMS uh, management solution also gives you some recommendations. So there's a check uh, uh, which uh, validates what the current version and what the latest version available. So they will check in that also which recommends uh, the upgrade for, uh, for system. Yeah. And, and to add on to that in terms of tools, MP Studio can do a lot to help you. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm director of sales, so I'm selling a little bit, but honestly, the, it's got a database. So you've got all your 2012 MPs in there, and you can have your 2016 MPs. You could test the 2012 MP, run the test against a production box using that 2012 MP, see how many alerts you get per hour, and then test your new MP. Or you could just simply, you know, run that test against your 2016 environment and, and find out how many alerts are, it'll generate. You can audit or compare any two management packs. So if you've changed something, tweaking it a little bit for 2016, you can very easily find out what the differences are between those two MPs. Or if a vendor releases a 2016 version of a management pack, you can compare it to the previous one. So if a new rule or monitor has been added, maybe you need a new override. So you can nail that with MP Studio. Um, let's talk about fragments. You could take you know, an MP and create a fragment from something you had for your 2012 environment. If you don't want to bring it right into 2016, you could create a fragment from it and then use that fragment to build out your new management packs. And then MP Studio has some other features, including the ability to move overrides. So you can take an override. If you don't want to take the whole override MP, you're looking for an opportunity to clean up your override MP, you don't have to deploy that old override MP. You can just copy or move the overrides you want to keep. So lots of capabilities in MP Studio. This would definitely be part of a migration presentation that we would do at some time in the near future. So watch for um, an invitation to that webinar. Okay, <laughs> there's more questions, are there?
This is good. Uh, I think we're caught up. Okay, nice. And um, I see the last one came in with a thank you. I think it's pretty cool. Lots of people are wanting T-shirts, Kevin, with your picture on it here. So we'll, maybe we'll collaborate on something, <laughs> something fun. So I need to announce the winners, and we can keep an eye to see if we get any more questions coming in. It's 3.58, so we have a couple of minutes. And so from our draw prize today, we have, uh, let's see if I can pronounce this right, it's Brian Gusti, or Gusti, and uh, Brian, you win the Xbox, and we have a winner for a copy of MP Author Professional, and it is John Verison. and again, I hope I'm saying your name right, um, Brian Gusti, the Xbox, and John Verison, the winner of a copy of MP Author Professional. We'll have your email address because you've registered, we'll reach out, but feel free to email us. I do see some more questions coming in, so I'm going to um, turn it back over and see if there's some here we want to get answered. T-shirt, T-shirt. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. So it looks like that's it for questions. You guys are awesome uh, attendees hanging in there. We've got uh, we've got still hundreds of people on the call, which is phenomenal, really. And uh, one one final big shout out to Microsoft for having not one, not two, but three uh, people join us today and present. So thank you very much to Kevin Holman, uh, to Brian Wren, and to Aditya. Really appreciate your time, Mike. Uh, thank you to you as well, Marnix Wolf, for doing a presentation. It's uh, it's awesome to have you guys participate, and uh, really makes this event special. I hope everybody on the call found it useful and helpful. We will uh, make the recording available as soon as we can, and we'll send that out. Any questions we couldn't answer, we'll do our best to provide an answer in the follow-up emails. Um, our next webinar won't be too far out. I believe we're going to do something more dedicated to just authoring with fragments and using fragments at some point. Um, we will also be hosting an authoring course sometime in the very near future. I'm going to say in the, within the next four weeks. Um, we'll have some more information sent out about that. There will be something on our web page as well. And um, we have some new products that have been released. They were announced here today. And so we'll look for some more information coming out on those as well. And uh, that's it. I'm, I'm going to put a wrap on things. And uh, if any of the other presenters have anything they would like to add, by all means, now's a good time. Thanks, thanks Randy, and uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, it has been a great uh, session and great questions, I think. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. OK, on that note, I'll be closing the session once again. Thank you everyone for joining us today.